patiently waiting. We apologize for being a little tardy. Is, in my opinion, the number one contender in the UFC's welterweight division, the man who should be fighting Tyron Woodley or Stephen Wonderboy Thompson next after they fight on March 4th, UFC 209. The great Damian Maya is on the phone. Damian, how are you? How are you doing, Ariel? Very nice to, to be in your show again. Yes, it is a pleasure as always. And again, I'm sorry for uh, keeping you waiting. Daniel Cormier likes to talk a lot and we had to, you know, we had to squash the whole <laughs> issue. Worry. He, he just have... <laughs> Uh, Damien, how would you describe the last few weeks for you? Because you've talked about this. You, you posted this very nice letter um, on your Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And they, they continue to come at you with different fights, different um, different scenarios, different options. And, you know, you said it on this show right after UFC 205. You were waiting for the belt. Uh, you know, it, it appeared you should have been next if it didn't go to a draw. And the fight is rapidly approaching. And they continue to come to you with non-title fights. How has the last few weeks been? Has it been frustrating? How would you describe it? I really, it's it's hard to understand. You know, the the the, the game is changing, and the the UFC is kind of you know things are confusing right now. At least in my point of view, I've been working with the UFC for the last ten years, and I never see the things like that. It's just like you said, I I'm, I am the number one contender. And nobody questioned that. And what I, what I, what I, what I think is like it gets like three more weekends to the fight, so it's it's pretty close. I, I want to wait no matter what. You know, I can fight, but uh, and it's hard to wait. It's like it's it's. I know that you know for me it's much better to be active. You know, to be. Uh, uh, fighting because you know for us a guy an athlete is always good to be active uh, but I know that always you know when you have a fight there is a risk so you know I built my 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 path to here and I think you know I gotta be patient I spoke with all my team and uh, I will I will wait this three and a half weeks you know that lasts for the fight uh, I, I I can answer any more people in the street that you know when i go to the street everybody asks when you're gonna fight for the title and i don't know what to ask anymore what you what you i don't know what to say anymore when they come to you with these uh these offers do you or your your, your manager your great manager eduardo alonso do you say like why like we we told you what we wanted and we're clearly the number one contender why do you keep offering us you know robbie lawler masvid all these different names we want the belt yeah. it's been very clear from day one yeah. why, why do you keep trying to commit yeah. especially so close I, yeah i know i know why you know i know why i think there's two reasons one you know they they really don't care too much if they're gonna fight for the title or not. But I think the main reason is like, you know, they they having problems setting up fights. You know, they they cancel a couple of events and and they need you know names that you know uh, can sell. And I know even if they say I don't sell, I know I sell something. You know, and and you know I'm a name that you know can be as a coming event or a main event. Uh, with another guy and people want to see so it's it's hard because you can get you know fighters but fighters that can be in a co-main or main event it's not so easy and they need you to, to book fights and I understand you know the rush for that but like I said it's not it's not like you know I, I passed through that for the last year many times like when I saw Cody and Lawler I thought well, I was going to be the next. I was falling wing straight already, and they 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 book uh, Woodley, and then when I I won against uh, Matt Brown, I thought the same, and then they book uh, Wonder Boy, and then you know after I won against Conor, I said okay, now is the time. So, and but they I think it is these two reasons, you know they. They kind of you know trying to book fights because they need book fights for the the shows. But here we are three weeks away, essentially, as you said, less than a month away. The fight is March 4th. Do you feel now like, you know, you've you've gone through the storm? Are you confident? Are you 100 percent sure that you will fight for the belt next? Can you say that with with certainty or no? You cannot be certain about nothing life, of course, but I don't see nobody that can can be there, you know, besides me. I don't see nobody in the welterweight division. Uh, I don't see nobody that can build 
some something you know some you know can 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 keep winning in these three weeks and and be the next contender. So that there's not too much you know for for besides me. You know I understand if GSP would come back, they would try to put him, but I think. You know, besides that, I don't. I don't think there's nobody. Are you worried about that? Like, what what happens if they get GSP out? What happens if uh, Nick Diaz? You know, Woodley has talked about these guys. What will you do? Uh, you know, it's the crazy thing is like you know I understand GSP. You know, GSP is the greatest welterweight ever, and of course I would worry if he decides to come back now. But I think you know he's not coming back right now, and and I don't think he will jump for the the title fight right now. Uh, if he come, comes back, I think he wants big fights. And Nick Diaz, you know, I of course you know in my point of view they would, I think they could do because that that's how you know it falls. But I don't think it's is uh, in if you think as a sport, you know. Uh, it's not the the right decision because he didn't win fights for for last years. I don't yeah. I don't know well uh, how many many years, but for a long time. So of course it's is not the, the right thing. And one thing that I you know I say is like uh, uh, people it doesn't I think they get confused about this this kind of sport and sell with stuff. You know, people come to me and say, ah, they want to do that because it sells more. Yeah. But like I said in the statement, you know, there's no welter, besides GSP, there's no welterweight that sold fights before, you know, the, the, the title fights, you know. You know Woodley and Laura was very low what they sell in the pay-per-view. And, and I'm not saying that, no, to be... To say bad things about them, but it's just like he is right now. It is right now, uh, and I, I don't think I was so much worse than they do. And uh, and that's the thing, you know. People keep saying that, and what what I what I'm sad about, you know, as a journalist, a lot of MMA journalists they don't have like uh, I don't know how to say that in English, but the, the critical thinking, you know what I mean. Critical thinking. The, 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 uh, Critical thinking. Yeah, you know what I mean. The, like the, yeah. the, 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 not just you know repeat what people say, but you know think about what you're saying. Sure. People just the, the same. You know, you know it's because it sells more, or sell less, and and I, 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 I believe that that's that's not true. Uh, when you say that you don't think that the UFC necessarily cares if you fight for the belt, do you think that they're trying to get you to lose by putting you against like a Lawler or a Masvidal? Like, do you think they're trying to knock you off? No, no, no. I don't think they they they, they need book fights for like you know events that are, are important for them. And I mean, in 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 their you know in their rules. So you know it's it's good to use me to to you know keep this this shows going and, and sell awesome. Okay, and, and for someone, I mean, you've talked uh, many a times about you don't do this for the money. You want to be the best. You want to be champion. You mentioned this yeah. in your Facebook post. Are you worried about the direction? of the company, of the sport, when it's all about money fights and they have to make money? I mean, that's very clear that the new owners bought it for $4 billion. They're trying to make a profit here. Are you worried that we're moving away from sport? Yeah, that, that's another thing that I think is is, uh, is a mistake and it's, it's a lie because if you see every sport in the world, you know, every sport, like if you see Football, soccer, tennis, everything. You know, every sport that has many years and is consolidated, people like to watch because they want to see the winner. So they don't watch NBA or they, they don't watch, let's say, the Australian Open in tennis because they want to see the, the guy who talks more or the guy who who, who is more, you know, outspoken. They want to see Federer and Anal because they are the best and they want to see the best. They don't. They want to see, you know, they don't want they put somebody who plays more fancy because they think it will be that they want to see. And in the end of the day, who follow sport like to see? There is some people that they like to see, you know, people talking shit and a lot of people like that. 
you know, sport. But those are not the people that are going to carry on the sport forever. Mm. I think if we don't change and don't think as a sport, you know, it will be, our sport will be like something they're going to remember 10 years from now, from now, like a nice thing, but, you know, that has gone. Because I don't think this will last for sure that's not going to last. When people watch a sport, I don't know if you understand what I mean, but, you know, they, they watch yesterday the Super Bowl because they want to see the best teams. Mm. They, they don't want to, you know, go there and see the guy who talks more and the guy who, who plays different than the other one. They want to see the best. And that's how, you know, the truly fans of sport is the ones that carry on the sport and the ones that will influence other people to like the sport. So I think it's a lie when the people say, ah, they're looking for money fights, but they, they're looking for really short-term things. Mm. And, and if, you, if you keep looking short, just short-term, I think you ruin the sport, and in the end of, in the, end of the, the line, you're going to ruin the UFC because people will start to, to just you know, give up. I, I just heard that in Brazil is the second mark, market for the UFC in the world, and Brazil and you know, all the... the, the the signings of Combat uh, TV here, who who uh, shows the USC and the pay-per-views, is dropping hmm. because people can take a while, but people will will realize that when it's not a sport anymore, you know, people you cannot fool the people all the time, you know, and, and people will understand that. Uh, of course, this guy like Connor, you know, he has a, a great personality and he's a great fighter, and that's okay. But some people like GSP, he was a guy who was selling, you know, a lot, and he was a guy more quiet and 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 more, you know, much more, yeah, uh, very different than Connor. And there is space for everybody. What I think is is like as a long thinking a long term. Uh, we got to treat the UFC as a sport, MMA as a sport. If you do that, I think then this sport will last like for the last next hundred years for sure. But if not, you know, it will be just another WWE and we have a red WWE and, yeah. uh, and they, they are the best in what they do. Are you worried though, like uh, given the state of the UFC right now and, and you know, the way they're, they're, they're making matchups and, making belts and things like that. Are you worried that it's going more towards the WWE, that a guy like you is going to be left out, you know, left on the sidelines because you just, that's just not part of your nature? I, I think they should worry about that. Ah, because, you know, it, it will kill the, the UFC and in the end of the day, they will lose money if, if I think they, they keep doing that. And for me, you know, I just fight. Of course, I, I had a dream, you know, to, to be champion, but who knows, you know, even if I get the, the 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 title shot, you know, I have a couple guys on the other side, you know, Wonder Boy or or, or Woodley share three stuff, so it's not it's not sure I'm gonna win. It's like fifty feet sure. for both. So, you know, for me it's just my dream. But for somebody who paid four point two billion dollars, you know, you gotta really I think think a little bit more in not just short term because uh, it, it, it's it's uh, UFC is one thing that really I think can they can get this money back. You know, it's a it's a fascinating, fascinating sport, and it, it has I think it's still a lot of room to grow, uh, and for sure they can make money out of that. But I don't think like treating UFC like uh, WWE will be will be the right way. I think that that's the thinking, you know, from outside, you know, I'm not a businessman, but it's just what I think. I think you can maybe make some money right now, but, you know, people are going to start to realize and, and that's it. The, the, do you ever tell, say to yourself, like, man, you know, because you made great examples, tennis and, and, um, and, and golf to, to a degree, also football, as you mentioned, the people don't really necessarily like, it's always good if you can talk, but it's not, you look at Tom Brady. He's not a big talker. Do you ever say to yourself, man, I picked the wrong sport. I, I should have done something like this is the one sport where it seems like if you talk a lot, this in boxing to a degree, um, you'll get a lot more. Do you, do yeah. you ever say, do you ever joke about that? Like, uh, the, the one sport where I'm kind of the outlier is the one that I picked. Uh, no, you know, I, I just, I don't think that because, you know, I, I do what I love to do and I'm very glad about that. Like I say, 
you know, I built my path, you know, and, and I have a nice career. You know, I'm, I'm still doing everything that I can. I will keep doing what I like after I stop to, to fight in the UFC. I will, you know, keep teaching and keep traveling and, and you know, work on my association and, and, and spreading jiu-jitsu. So it's much bigger than just to be an athlete, you know, is is the, is the mission that I have. So uh, I don't care. And it's great to be in the UFC, you know, UFC has been the last years great to me. It's always it's always great to fight there. They always treat me nice and and I don't have nothing to to complain about them. But uh, I just you know, I just think that if it was like a couple years ago maybe, you know, we, we didn't uh we not was we're going to to pass something like that, you know. Who do you think wins, Woodley or Wonderboy in the rematch? I just, I, you know, there's so many things that are going through my head that I didn't think about that. <laughs> I think it, uh, it's it's it depends how took the best lesson for the first from the first fight. I think, like I said to you before, I think Woodley won the first one, but sometimes. Uh, maybe one of the got confident that that can be, he can survive, and he, maybe he was a little bit afraid of some something uh, that would like would do. And now, now if you know he's more more confident, so you never know. You know, the second fight when the two high level guys fight for the second time is always very tricky because it depends very much on the on the which one got from the first fight and which one you know if if you were able to read well your opponent and who were able to to read better his opponent mm. so you don't want to go on the record you don't have a favor right now one that you're picking who I'm picking I, I would say I would say Woodley because he won the first one in my in my point of view do you have a like preference? Is, Would you rather fight Woodley than, than Thompson? Do you have a preference? No, 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 no. Like the first time, I don't have preference. Okay. Are you going to the fight? <laughs> no, because, you know, I've been in, in Condon's Slaughter fight. Never, <laughs> ha- never happens. Then I've been in New York. Never happens. Uh. But, you know, let's see. Let's let's you know let's let's try to don't go to this fight and maybe you know something happens after that and I get the title shot. Fair enough. Has anyone told you like since? Of course, of course, of course. If they would say for me, you know, okay, come, uh, we wanna you to come, you know, as a guest fighter because we need to promote you because you know there's a chance that they, you're gonna be the next. And of course, I would go, but I, I'm not gonna ask nobody, you know, to to go. Uh, and go just because I want to go and see the fight. I can't watch from my home. Right, and I don't blame you as well. Um, has anyone, you know, since the the Masvidal stuff, has anyone come out and said to you, "Okay, you're going to get the tail shot"? Have you been told this 100? percent No, no. And and one thing that I want to make clear is that when we, and I, I I said that in the statement and. Uh, we didn't, they said we turned down the fight or somebody said, but we, we didn't turn down the fight. We just said, we want to wait hmm. till, you know, Woodland Thompson fight. And, and, and you know, we're going to come back in, in touch. And, and, but, of course, uh, it, it's a kind of turn down, but we said, wait a little bit and we're going we're gonna to decide. But, uh, of course, I, I wanna I wanna wait right now because I've been waiting for for all this time and I I don't like to be inactive for sure. But you know now it's just a, a war in my mind to keep patience and you know keep training. Sure, and uh, you know to 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 be crystal clear, I think you 100% should be next, and you've done enough, and you've certainly earned it. But I'm just wondering, because they've reached out to you to try to beef up some of these other cards, as you mentioned, are you at all worried mm-hmm. that, you know, sometimes they don't like when you turn down fights, even though it's justified. Are you worried that that's going to come mm-hmm. back to haunt you, that they're not going to give you the title shot because they feel like in the last couple of months you've turned down other opportunities brought your way? I don't think so, because in the, in the end of the day, like you said, 
they need to make the fight that the people want to see. And, and, and people want to see, in the welterweight division, they want to see my fight with the winner. Uh, everybody says that, nobody says this. Somebody would say, you know, like, Nick Diaz or somebody else, but, you know, nobody really uh, who, who follows the sport says something different. So uh, I'm not worrying there because in, in the end of the day, they want to do the fight that the fans want to, to watch. And the, the, the truly fans of MMA, they want to watch uh, the, the winner fighting against me. Mm. Uh, and that's what they were. What, I remember when I, I was talking to Joe Silva many years ago, back in 2009, and you know what? He offered something to me, and I asked, okay, if I win this fight, can I fight for the title? And then Joe said to me, Damien, don't worry, you know, we're going to build momentum. I know what I'm doing. You know, I've been doing that for a long time. That was in 2009. Hmm. And, and Joe said to me, I will make the fight that, that the, you know, fans will be asking for you to fight for the title against Anderson. And, and that will be natural. You know, if you win this fight, fans will be asking. And when they, they keep asking, you know, uh, then we're gonna fight for the title because uh, we, we're building your your momentum, mm. and that's what is happening right now. Uh, and I, I feel I can feel that much more than when I was about to fight Anderson, and yep. uh, much more right now. I agree with that as well. I uh, wish you the best, Damien. Uh, you know, uh, some people have their, you know, to steal a wrestling phrase, like a, a gimmick, right? You know, some people have the talking gimmick, the whatever gimmick. Your your gimmick is class. And I think it's actually working in your favor now with the statements that you've put out with the tweets and whatnot. And, and hopefully you do get what is rightfully yours and you get to fight for the belt after that March 4th title fight. Again, thank you for the time, Damien. Thank you for being you. And we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you very much, Cheryl. And, and it's very always great to be in your show. And I hope to go to New York soon again and be live with you there. Anytime. You're always welcome here. Thank you, Damien. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. There he is, Damien Maya, stopping by. You got a feel for him. You've done enough. You beat them all. You're there. And they keep throwing other guys your way. And you're like, yo, the, the fight's coming up in three weeks. Can I just wait for it at this point? But that's the sport. It's not exactly cut and dry like, like in other sports, as he was talking about.